All right, Spider-Man fans, so we're going to be doing a comparison today between these two figures. What you see before you is the Amazing Spider-Man 2 figures from both Marvel Legends and from Marvel Select. Both are from around 2014, so at this point, they're pretty old figures, relatively speaking, and neither one of these figures has been re-released, so if you want to get a hold of them, you're going to be looking onto the secondary market. But these are two figures I absolutely love having in my collection. I'm a huge Amazing Spider-Man fan. I actually do like both movies, and yes, Later on, we can talk about some of the major problems with Amazing Spider-Man 2 and a couple of problems with the first Amazing Spider-Man, but I've been a really big fan of those movies. I'm a really big fan of Andrew Garfield as Spider-Man overall, and not to knock Tom Holland or Tobey Maguire, but Andrew Garfield, I thought, did the best job portraying both Peter Parker and Spider-Man. And so I just like having these figures in my collection. Now, in light of recent events and recent release announcements, both from SH Figure Arts and from Marvel Legends, that we're going to be getting not only more Tom Holland Spider-Man figures from both companies, but Tobey Maguire figures from both companies and Andrew Garfield figures from both companies. Now, what I've seen a lot online is a lot of people complaining about the SH Figure Arts, both because of the high price tag for most basic collectors. I mean, let's be honest, around $100 a figure, and if you don't jump on it in time, it may be, even be more than that on the aftermarket. And a lot of people complaining about the horrible crotch syndrome that those SH Figure Arts seem to have, at least with the prototypes that we've been shown. And then, of course, the three-pack coming from Marvel Legends that gives you uh, a reused Tom Holland Spider-Man, but a brand new sculpt for Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield, at least as far as we can tell. But then again, those are probably more than a year out before we even get a chance to get any of them. And what happens if you want yourself a really good, amazing Spider-Man 2 Garfield version of the character? Well... There's not a lot of options, but these, these are the main two, especially if you like your six-inch line with decent to really good articulation. So these are the ones we're going to talk about today. Now, I am going to go ahead and just preemptively say I'm going to steal a little bit of an idea from a really, really great YouTube channel called 5POA run by a guy named Jason. He does an amazing job on all his videos. Uh, he likes to point out five different things that he compares figures on. And uh, while I'm not going to do those same five things overall, uh, I, I gotta admit, he's a great channel and I, I love watching his stuff. And uh, so shout out to him if you haven't checked him out. But today we are going to compare these figures on five different points and then we'll uh, kind of round it out and see which one is gonna be the best deal for you and your collection. All right, so first up, we're going to be talking about sculpt on these two figures. Now, you can see a lot from the sculpt as they stand right there. And just standing there in a static pose, to me, it becomes very obvious which one has the better, you know, kind of neutral position. And that, of course, to me, would definitely be the Marvel Select. Now, taking a closer look at the Marvel Legends, you can see, and, and this is an older figure, of course, but we've got those horribly spread out hips. Uh, and we've got some of the, if not the, ugliest butterfly joints I have ever seen on a Marvel Legend, at least in the Hasbro era. There were some pretty pretty gnarly ones back in the day when it came to, uh, to Toy Biz stuff. But overall, the sculpt is good. For what it is, for when it came out around the 2014 area, it's a decent sculpt. And it, 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 it serves its purpose. And it's not a bad looking figure. But when you compare it... To this sculpt right here, when you look at this guy up close and personal, when you look at how well everything blends together, even with the older school ball hips and the, quite frankly, lack of really any decent articulation, that all helps add to the sculpt. Now, when you get both of them up close and personal again, one thing you'll notice is the colors are a little bit different. This is a darker blue and a little bit darker, more bold red. This one's a little bit lighter red and a little bit lighter of a blue, a little bit softer of a blue color. Now, as far as what is more screen accurate, again, hands down, the Marvel Select is, in my opinion, much more screen accurate to what the actual colors were 
on the figure. And unlike on the Marvel Legends, where the web lines are actually indented into the figure, on the Marvel Select, they actually pop out. And they're actually up and raised, much like they were on the old uh, Toy Biz Tobey Maguire figures. Of course, these are painted black instead of painted silver. Again, all in all, much more screen accurate. Now, there's a lot of things you can say about these two figures, and neither one of them is perfect. They're both older figures, and one certainly is definitely a little bit older when it comes to articulation, which we'll get into next. But when it comes to overall sculpt, I've got to give it hands down for paint and overall body shape and everything across the board. I've got to give it to the Marvel Select. It's just in general a better looking figure, especially if you're going to keep it in a neutral pose. All right, so now we're going to talk about uh, articulation itself, as we just mentioned. Now, obviously, you should be able to tell right off the bat which one is probably going to have better articulation. And that's going to be this one right here. It's got an actual ab crunch that actually does something, which is nice, both forward and back. It's got bicep cuts, which this one doesn't have. Uh, it actually has thigh cuts, which while this one doesn't have thigh cuts, it pretty much can do the same thing with the ball swivel hips that it's got where it goes into the upper thigh and cuts there and can turn. And then of course we do have calf swivel here, which the Marvel Select doesn't have, which basically means that for most of the things and positions you're going to put a Spider-Man figure into, this one will more than likely probably work for you. Again, we've got the ball joint hips, we've got the uh, uh, butterfly joints, we've got pretty much everything across the board as far as getting this figure into all the different positions that you might want a Spider-Man figure into. Uh, now, I will say, as far as the lower body on the Marvel Select, he's actually not bad at all. Yes, he does lack the calf articulation there, but he has the exact same uh, uh, foot articulation in that, you know, ankles right there all the way forward, all the way back, and we've got really, really good ankle pivot, but no ankle rotation. And it's actually the exact same here for this guy. Uh, we've got forward, we've got back, and we've got really good pivot, but no rotation. You're relying completely on the uh, calf swivel and the uh, thigh swivel for any sort of rotation on the figure. Obviously the arms themselves because of the butterfly joints and the bicep cuts are going to be a little bit better when it comes to the Marvel Legends as opposed to the Marvel Select. Marvel Select is okay. It's not bad, but when you only have single jointed elbows as opposed to double jointed elbows up here, uh, you don't get a lot of motion there. Now as far as his lower legs, they're actually really really good. You can go all the way out and even kind of up. You've got complete swivel on the upper thigh here because of that guy right there. And of course double jointed knees which go all the way back much the same way that the Hasbro wheel. So as far as the lower body goes, these two are pretty much on the same playing field, but it is the upper body, so when it comes to articulation, I'm going to have to give it to the Hasbro Marvel Legends for being the better articulated figure, even if that articulation is at the cost of sculpt. All right, so now we are going to talk about accessories. This is going to be a very quick little segment, simply because there's just not a lot to talk about. The Marvel Legends here came with a Build-A-Figure piece for Green Goblin, which, if you're putting together Green Goblin, awesome, but nowadays, in 2022, uh, he can be kind of pricey to slap together, especially if you're going to be buying the figures complete. So, if you don't plan on doing that, it really doesn't add to your... Well, action figure experience. Other than that, he came with one set of extra hands, and that is about it. I would show you those, but I don't have them out right now. The Marvel Select, on the other hand, actually came with not one, not two, but three extra set of hands. You've got fist hands, you've got thwip hands, you've got wall suction hands, you've got also hands that are made for these right here. These web accessories, you get one two of them, and there are hands specifically made to hold on to those along with a couple of smaller uh, uh, webs for the thwip hands, and then of course, most of all, you get this right here, an Andrew Garfield head, which all in all isn't too bad. It's not perfect, 
Could be better, but uh, certainly better than some of the other ones I've seen, specifically the one that came out for The Amazing Spider-Man 1 uh, under Marvel Legends. That one was just kind of horrible as far as I'm concerned. So you get those extra accessories with the Marvel Select. You do not get anywhere near that much with the Marvel Legends. So hands down, in this particular case, Marvel Select wins. Alright, so now we're going to talk about fit, and what I mean by that is how well do these figures actually fit into your collection? Now, Marvel Legends is a huge line, probably the most owned and sold line of 6-inch action figures probably for the last 20 years, especially if you like to collect Marvel characters. And because of that, you're going to want a good Amazing Spider-Man 2 that fits in best with your collection. So let's compare these two figures to a handful of other Marvel Legends and see how they fit. All right, so first up, let's compare him to the Pizza Spidey body. This is not Pizza Spider-Man himself. As you can tell, this is the symbiote Spider-Man on the Pizza Spidey buck. And if you look here, he falls pretty much directly right in the middle of these two. You've got the Hasbro Marvel Legends that's a bit short and the Marvel Select, which is a bit tall, which is to be expected when it comes to these figures. At the time that these figures were being manufactured in Marvel Legends, they were coming out from time to time time a little on the small side and Marvel Select has always been a larger closer to seven inch scale figure line so of course it's going to fall somewhere in the middle when comparing these two right here all right and here we go comparing them to the new retro Spider-Man Marvel Legends buck this of course is Ben Riley. I don't have one of the new retro Spider-Man figures because they are just way too expensive on the secondary market especially for how many figures I already have of Spider-Man, but this is a good size comparison here because this is a good modern Spider-Man. You can see he is considerably taller than the old school Marvel Legends Amazing Spider-Man 2 uh, and still a bit shorter than the Marvel Select, but honestly not as much as you would expect coming from a 7-inch scale line. I mean, really, quite honestly, about this point, if you gave Andrew Garfield a buzz cut, they might be the same size, actually. It's kind of hard to tell, but they are very, very close indeed. All right, now we're going to compare them to a Vulcan from the new Bone Breaker wave. This, of course, is the buck that Hasbro has come out and said is going to basically be the new standard for a lot of their figures going forward. It's basically going to replace the Bucky Cap mold, and I think this one will work really, really well for, I don't know, everything from Cyclops to Bucky Cap to maybe even a Captain America, although it might be a little small for a Captain America, but still, all in all, I think this is a great buck, and definitely a good buck to use in comparison to see which one of these two amazing Spider-Man 2 figures actually will work better in your collection. As we can see, the Vulcan is considerably bigger than the Hasbro Marvel Legends Amazing Spider-Man 2, and just a hair, maybe an eighth of an inch shorter than the Marvel Select. Of course, Peter Parker is supposed to be tall and thin. Uh, he is portrayed sometimes as a teenager where he would probably be a little bit shorter, maybe better compared to this here, but an adult Peter Parker is supposed to be around six foot tall, so having him be close to the same size as a six foot tall Vulcan I think works pretty damn well. And then lastly, we're going to compare him to one of my custom kit bash figures. This, of course, as you can tell, is a custom kit bash Punisher that I threw together. Won't go into too many details, but essentially it is on a gung-ho body from the G.I. Joe Classifieds line. And I kind of made some tweaks to it, changed a few things up, and gave myself a nice custom Punisher. And as you can tell, he's actually slightly taller, even with... Andrew Garfield's hair, he's slightly taller than the Marvel Select 7-inch scale figure. And I think this is a, a good kind of comparison to make. And he is a lot taller, again, than the Hasbro Marvel Legends Amazing Spider-Man 2 figure, which, again, just kind of looks like a kid at this point. So I guess if you want a good kid Spider-Man, maybe 14, 15 years old, just got bit by the spider, the Marvel Legends might work well. If you want an adult Peter Parker, when it comes to fit... You might want to lean towards the Marvel Select, and as far as I'm concerned, in this particular head-to-head, -head, the Marvel Select has won on just about every comparison.
All right, now finally we're going to talk about price. Now, when it comes to these two figures right here, both can only be had, at least at this point, on the secondary market. Obviously, with Hasbro putting out a new Andrew Garfield Spider-Man, you will never see a repeat of this guy right here. But with Marvel Select, there's always a chance, at least, that you might actually get a reissue at some point. They are known to do that from time to time, and given that No Way Home was so big, who knows, they might actually have plans to do it. But at the moment, both of these figures are going to be had on the secondary market. Now, when it comes to the Hasbro Marvel Legends right here, he starts at about 60 bucks, and depending on condition and whether or not he's still in the package, can go for well over a hundred. Sometimes I've seen this guy selling for 150 bucks. Now maybe you get lucky and find him somewhere local, but count on at least spending $60 to pick him up to add him to your collection. On the other hand, the Marvel Select, I regularly see between $30 and $40, a lot of times with free shipping on eBay, and that's a really, really good deal. That means at most, for this figure right here, you're going to pay two-thirds of what it's going to start at to pick this figure up right here. And that is a great deal. So when it comes to price, hands down, the Marvel Select wins. All right, guys. Well, that is it for this comparison. And as we said going through this video, when it comes to sculpt, accessories, fit and price the marvel select wins hands down the only thing that the hasbro does better than the marvel select is the articulation and for the price quite honestly i don't know if that's a great deal so if you're looking to get what in my mind is the better of the two amazing spider-man figures and not spend a lot of money i would go for the marvel select because not only is he cheap not only does he look good but he fits in well with all your other six inch scale figures and unfortunately i just can't say the same about the marvel legends so there you go there's my little comparison hope you enjoyed it you got any questions comments anything like that leave it down below and we will see you guys later